Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and um, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing to you Team Wolf Season 3, Episode 13, Anchors. Um, this was the mid-season premiere, and you know what guys, I think this premiere was actually a lot stronger than the season premiere. It's not that I didn't like last season, it just got very uh, confusing, very complicated last season. There was way too much going on in my opinion last season. That was my one complaint about last season. And um, this one is much more focused. I'd have to say, I definitely will say that. It's much more focused. It seems they're going a much more darker route. And um, this is probably one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. And definitely my favorite episode of the season so far. I think it was just a really, really great episode. And I really, it really had everything I love about Team Wolf in it. So, if you guys remember, um, let's just get to uh, the recap here. Um, which I am reading off of this, but I'm not really going to need it. I am reading off something, though. Um, alright. So basically, um, the whole thing with this episode is that we, we start off, uh, we see Styles. he's in bed having nightmares, repeatedly mumbling, don't let them men, and we're thrown to his dream, which lands us into, uh, the high school. And then Nematon is featured right away and comes alive and Styles tries to touch it. Um, he wakes up though, and it's just a bad dream, basically. Uh, he wakes up and Lydia is in his bed, and I'm like, Styles and Lydia are together already? Okay, I like this. Uh, because I've always wanted uh, Styles and Lydia together, so I thought they were actually going to get to they were together in this episode. Um, but he's explaining to her he had a dream within a dream, and he pauses to ask why she's there. He gets out of bed, shuts the door, worried that they might get in, and the only problem is that when he walks out, he comes upon the nematome once again, and again, it's only a dream. So then he goes to tell Scott about this, telling him about sleep paralysis and his nightmares. And he says, you know what scares me the most? I'm not even sure this is real. And again, it's a dream. So um, then we, so that's basically how it started. You know what? I thought that was a really interesting intro. Because basically the whole theme of this season is now that Scott, Styles, and Allison were part of the lunar eclipse and they almost died basically... Um, they are now beginning to suffer from different types of, uh, side effects, and I really love the side effects that they're, uh, suffering from. Um, we'll get back into styles later. Let's go over to Scott, though. So, we then see Scott. He's experiencing some difficulty with his powers right now. Um, he has this interesting conversation with Isaac. It was actually kind of funny. Isaac's like, so are you mad at me for what I did? Because, you know, Isaac... Uh, is with Allison right now, and Scott says he's okay as long as they didn't kiss or anything, and uh, probably one of the most awkward scenes in Team Wolf history, definitely, like, that scene was just the definition of awkward, it was completely just, no, you, it was really awkward in my opinion, um, so, basically, he has this tense conversation with Isaac, and, um, Eventually, he throws Isaac against the wall because he really, the whole thing with Scott, his side effect is that he cannot control his anger, and um, he's kind of having PTSD. Then, Allison, as far as she's going, she finds herself in this hallucination where she made her way to the morgue when she, when she looks inside this, um, this cold chamber bearing her aunt's name, she, her aunt makes her way up the chamber more certain, and, um, so she is now being haunted by her dead aunt. Why? We don't know. That's her side effect. Um, so they're continuing to struggling with their day, basically, and eventually Lydia tells them, you know, she takes great pleasure in the fact that she's not the crazy one anymore, which is really funny to see, because, I mean, Lydia really is the only sane one right now, and usually Lydia is the one that's, like, screaming or something. Lydia's actually pretty calm now, and it was definitely funny to see that in this episode. So, you know, we're seeing that happening, basically, and, um... Scott is beginning to transform in the middle of the hallway, and Styles has to rush him to an empty classroom, and Scott finds a way to stop the change, and Styles realizes that not all of this is in their heads, and it actually is happening to them. And, um, 
So they head over to the person they can talk to that they, you know, they can trust, and that's, of course, Dr. Deaton. And Dr. Deaton, he explains that their subconscious is uh, trying to communicate with them. And even when he was, and even uh, translates the sign language Styles saw when he was hallucinating, um, because Styles had told Scott that he cannot read for some reason. Um, everything's jumbled to him for some reason. His subconscious is jumbling, jumbling everything up, and he doesn't really know why. And, um, he says when there's a door, there's a door. And the answer, as Scott points out, is when it's a jar. When it's in a jar. <laughs> so, um, that was definitely very interesting. I definitely found it to be really, really interesting, in my opinion. And, um, so there is some other stuff going on there besides that storyline. There is a lot more going on. And, um, let's just get to the other stuff. We actually do have a new, uh, character this season, so let's get into that new character. Her name is Kira. Kira is this, uh, girl whose father is the new history teacher, um, at Beacon Hills. And uh, I like her character, I do. I think she seems a little, I think her father seems a little sketchy to me, but I think she could be a nice character. The one thing that I don't really want is a relationship between her and Scott. I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, I get it that he's trying to move on and everything, but I just don't like the idea of him being in a relationship with someone other than Allison. I mean, it might work, but we'll, I don't know. I don't think that we'll ever have what Scott and Allison had. Um... So yeah, she was definitely a very interesting character, to say the least. I think I think she def I definitely enjoyed her character. Um, she seems like she's gonna kind of, uh, she's discussing what could be going on with them, and she's kind of the one who actually gives them a possible explanation uh, about this. And she says it's called Bardo, which is a tipper Tibetan word for an in for for an in between state, something that's caught between life and death. And there are several stages of Bardo, which include hallucinations and even being visited by uh, by deities. And the final stage of Bardo is death. Um, so um, she's going to try to help them out. And it seems like she might actually be the one to possibly save them. So we'll have to see. Um, it does look like there will be a villain introduced. We didn't really get the vil a new villain in this episode or anything, though. Now... The other thing going on, which I really, really loved, is uh, Sheriff Stolansky. By the way, one of the things I'm really loving about this season is that Styles actually has his own individual plot. He's not just there, you know, to make people laugh. In fact, this episode was not a very funny episode. There were some funny scenes like the Scott and Isaac confrontation. That was hilarious. Um, that was definitely interesting, to say the least. Also, uh, the last thing that I do want to talk about is Allison had this very interesting dream, and I say it's very interesting because of the way she had it. She dreams that she's having sex with Isaac, basically, but she can't help thinking about Scott um, while this is happening. And uh, it turns out it was just a dream. Now, what I'm thinking is that she's kind of torn right now. She wants to be with Isaac. At the same time, she doesn't want to hurt Scott. That's what I'm thinking because, I mean... Allison and Scott, I think, are eventually going to get together, but we'll just, we'll have to see. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing going on, so yeah, that was definitely very interesting. And the last thing is Sheriff Stolansky. Uh, Sheriff Stolansky, you know, that's a uh, Styles' father, and um, the big thing with him is that he's working through some old files. He's basically found this, um, he's a bit more in line to some of the circumstances that probably took place during those times. And basically, eight years ago, he had to tell a man that his wife and two daughters were killed in a car crash. And the youngest daughter, Ma uh, Malia, was seemingly dragged from the wreckage by coyotes and was never found. And since the accident happened on a full moon, the sheriff thinks werewolves, uh, could have been involved with this. And what eventually ends up happening is, um, and this was really big in my opinion, um, definitely this, this was just huge, in, I, I think, um, basically they find their, you know, they're, as they were leaving Dr. Deaton, uh, you know, uh, Stol Sheriff Stolansky shows up to ask Scott for help in finding Molly's body, 
So as the sheriff interviews Molly, his father, about the incident, Styles and Scott sneaking upstairs to try to get a lock on the girl's scent. But all Scott can smell is a family pet. The sheriff feels pretty bad about bringing up old memories for Mr. Tate. I will say that this, the dog scene was hilarious, in my opinion. I thought that was really funny. Um, he's doing all the, he's doing all this because basically Scott's father is reviewing his ability to solve cases and he might get him fired. The person who's going to fire him, Scott's father. Scott's father is planning to fire him. And you know what? This was an amazing scene in my opinion. This was probably the most amazing scene in the episode. Uh, he's very angry at his father. He almost transforms and his mother sees and he's calmed down. Because his father, you know, I don't think he knows about him being a wolf and everything. But his, his mother can tell that something bad is going to happen so she gets him to calm down. And I really love this scene because it was a really nice heart to heart here. Uh, she tells him basically to get out of the room, she, you know, she pulls him out of the room just in time and he is just, he has trouble stopping the transformation because Allison was his anchor basically and, and he is no longer has Allison and um, she basically says, well you know, she was only your first love, there will be other ones and until then you need to find your own anchor. Which is basically why this episode is called Anchors because definitely Scott's having these major anger issues and he really, really needs to, you know, be his own anchor and control himself, I think. I think definitely that was really great advice. And that was definitely one of my favorite scenes of the episode because I really liked their nice heart-to-heart, -heart, perfect mother-son interaction. Really, really great. All right, then Scott, he rushes over to Styles' house in the middle of the night. The two of them plan to find uh, Molly's body on their own. And um, they stumble upon the wreckage from eight years ago. They quickly realize they're not alone out in the woods. He chases this coyote. When he catches up, it's actually Malia, and her eyes are blue. So they have found Malia. Apparently, Malia is going to be played by a little girl. Uh, nobody knew about this character. They tried to keep her secret, but that's, you know, basically what happened. Now, when I thought this would be the ending for the episode, it wasn't because the one question going through my head was, where's Derek? And we find out at the end of this episode. We see Derek and Peter. They're tied up to a chain link fence getting tortured. And the only glimpse we see is this man's hand holding a knife. Somehow one of them screwed up and we'll have to see what happened. So that's what's happened to Derek and Peter. And that was a fantastic way to end the episode. Because it was an amazing episode in my opinion. I really, really love this episode guys. I can get, I'm going to give my highest rating 10 out of 10. I think Team Wolf is definitely back on track. I think it's much more focused now. Um, yes, it is confusing. Yes, it is a little bit more darker. But you know what? This is what the show needs. I definitely enjoyed the whole message of, you know, be your own anchor. And I'm really enjoying these plots. Let me know what you guys uh, think about thought of this episode. So, who did this to uh, Derek and Peter? Who, who was the one who did this? Who made them get into this situation? Was it Peter or Derek? It seemed like it was Derek who did it. Uh, Derek always gets himself in this such chaos. Um, will Scott be able to control his own anger? Will Styles find out why he can't read? And why, is, and does Allison still have feelings for Scott? I think Scott's trying to move on, but she still does have feelings for him. Also, um, Scott and Isaac, what, what do you think? Where do they, where do they stand as far as their, you know, friendship go? Also, Kira, is she going to be a love interest for Scott or just a friend? And do you think she could be the one to maybe pull the group out of this? Um... I think, I thought Lydia, as I said, was absolutely hilarious in this episode with her just, like, enjoying every minute of this, um, seeing them like this because she's the normal one. Um, also, what do you think of, uh, Sheriff Stelancey's plot? I really love it because he's finally getting more to do, and he's usually just been this background character who's helped out, who, you know, hasn't believed his son. Now he does, he's starting to figure out more things, and I definitely really enjoy that. So overall, I absolutely love this premiere. I thought it was a fantastic premiere. And um, I will see you guys for more reviews. I'm really happy that I can review stuff to you again because I miss reviewing stuff for you guys. And I really love, you know, reviewing this stuff to you. So I'll see you guys in my next video, which um, is going to be my review for um, the season premiere of, no, the mid-season premiere of Pretty Little Liars tonight. So I'll see you guys for that. Bye.